Justin Marshall, 81 tests for the All Blacks. He's calling the World Cup for Supersport out of South Africa after being rejected by Sky Sport. You've had a couple of days to sit and think about it. Or if you're anything like the rest of us, mate, back here home, sit and sulk about it. You were there, though, watching it live at Twickers. How are you feeling a couple of days later today? Yeah, I was. Uh, I was really surprised, to be honest, mate, that uh, the, the All Blacks struggled the way that they did. Um, they pretty much got ambushed by a side that came out Super physical, super committed, uh, was massively positive. You know, like I think I said during the commentary that, like, Sia Colisi um, turned down many kicking opportunities to try and accumulate points, which sometimes South Africa tend to do to, to go for more. And eventually that led to obviously yellow, red cards, and the All Blacks just not being able to maintain the intensity that South Africa brought to the game. Um, I think we've spoken for the last, what, two weeks, three weeks, mate, where I've been very adamant that we needed to get our number one side out there and needed to go out and flex our muscles and make a statement about intent of Rugby World Cup. Um, and, yeah, credit to Ian Foster. He named, he named a full-strength side to a degree, but they just weren't up for it. They, they, they just mentally weren't there, and I can't understand why. I remember, you know, at the very start of the game, and I don't know whether it was you or the South African commentators said it, you know, the All Blacks were on the field. They came off, they're all stony face. They certainly looked as though they were. But then from that particular point on, we do a hucker where there's just an, an enormous amount of emotion and energy in it and then seem to be flat on our heels afterwards. I'd, yeah. I mean, you know, you contrast that with the way we started at Mount Smart. That's what's so difficult to understand, isn't it? You know, we were off like a rocket against Argentina and Mendoza, the South Africans at Mount Smart, and we were just so flat in Dunedin, different set of players, but flat again at, against England, uh, sorry, against um, South Africa at uh, Tokenham. I think probably uh, th there's been too much read into how, how well the All Blacks went in the rugby championship um, in terms of how far they had come and I certainly feel that South Africa really did their homework. They looked at what happened to them at Mount Smart. They bought a completely different style of defence. They bought much more physicality than what they delivered and particularly in the first quarter of that game at Mount Smart Stadium and they were a different beast. And and when you, when you get that uh, in the opposition and there is a change uh, in, in their DNA and, and the way that they're playing, then you've got to recognise that really quickly and adjust. And that's exactly what the All Blacks didn't do. They did the opposite. They they looked stunned. They looked shocked. They looked clueless as to how they could find a way to break down the aggressive line spread that South Africa be, uh, brought. The, I think when South Africa reviewed the game from Mount Smart, they would have first first thing they would have said was they out-physicaled us, and secondly, they beat us at the breakdown big time. Well, they, they definitely won both of those departments um, hands down at the weekend, and that was very evident. And the All Blacks, which is worrying because the side they put out is full of experience, been to World Cups before. It, there's enough personnel out there that know that, okay, the opposition are doing this to us. We've got to adjust. We've got to adapt. Didn't. And, and that's the thing that really bemused me, like the fact that they weren't able to combat it and just simply continue to do the same things that revolved around them making the same mistakes, getting themselves under the same pressure, and huge ill-discipline because they weren't coping. Where's the leadership? Justin, Ian Foster says afterwards that we were rusty. I, look, I get really frustrated at comments like this, and I wanted your reaction to it too. Look, our main guys hadn't played since July the 29th, but you're a professional rugby player. We get told you can only play five games of super rugby, then you've got to have a rest. I just don't think rustiness is ever an excuse. And also another one was that, oh, this is a young all-black forward pack in the second half. Mate, if you've got an all-black jersey on, again, I don't believe there's an excuse. You're either fit to play as an all-black or you're not to fit to play as an all-black. In that case, don't get on the field. Do you feel the same way? I do. I, I don't disagree with the fact that you bring Brody Retallick and Cody Taylor and Shannon Frizzell back into the mix who were very prominent at Mount Smart Stadium, all of a sudden, that's a different looking forward pack, you know. Um, so, yeah, there will be some adjustment in physicality. There will be some adjustment in the way that they have a, a different style of intensity because, you know, particularly Frizzell, like, was been an absolute revelation. You know, he, I thought our back row really, really struggled. Like, Artie's probably the quietest game he's had in a very, very long time. 
Um, Sam Kane couldn't get himself into the game, uh, you know, and, and obviously Jacobson was a victim of Scott Barrett's yellow card. So, you know, the, the, they, they weren't, they didn't have the same dynamic as what they did, you know, um, a month earlier. So you could, you could throw that into the mix. But yes, I am with you to a degree. Like, at the end of the day, there was players out there that were actually putting that shirt on and going out and getting an opportunity to start a game for the All Blacks by being impressive, by fronting up, by being physical, by being tough, by being All Blacks to start a World Cup game against France um, in a couple of weeks' time. So they had everything to play for and nothing to lose. But you, you would have to say, no, that there was nobody that really obviously wanted to grab the, sc- uh, the game by the scruff of the neck and say, hey, let, let me lead, um, like a lot of their players did. And, and that's a bit of a worry, to be honest. 81 tests for the All Blacks. He's at the World Cup covering it for Supersport out of South Africa. Justin Marshall with us. How, how, how much of a worry is it, or, or is that can that be dismissed as a one-off really bad performance, given the fact that you're never going to win a game against them with 14 men in the second half? And Scott Barrett, now we know, is able to play against France. That red card hasn't been upgraded. There's no ban attached to it or anything like that. But, you right. know, we, we, we go from Mount Smart to Twickenham, and then, you know, just I suppose most of us are just trying to figure out in our heads, well, which is the real All Blacks side, and which is the side that's going to turn up in two weeks' time, September the 9th in Paris? Um, Capability-wise and, and the way that we can play, I don't think it's, it's a big problem. I think the bigger picture is the fact that this side, all of a sudden after one test match, regardless of how disappointing the performance was, doesn't become a poor side. And, and they are more than capable of, of winning this Rugby World Cup should they find... Uh, their feet again and and at the moment you know they, they shouldn't be hugely doubting themselves what what they have shown and I did mention it during commentary I said look the thing about the All Blacks is they're going to lose this test match that, that, that's quite evident uh, but I said the problem for them is if they don't try and show something in at least the last quarter or whatever the rest of the world are watching this game if it was the only game that was on on a Friday night all the other games that were played over the over the, the weekend were all Saturday, Sunday fixtures. So every other international side that are looking at the All Blacks hitting this Rugby World Cup were watching their performance, but they were all watching, more importantly, what was frustrating the All Blacks and not allowing them to play. And they were gathering information from it, going, OK, well, they don't like this and they don't like that. Um, oh, they really struggled with this part of the game. And so they're all of a sudden getting confidence that the All Blacks aren't invincible, that they are vulnerable. And, uh, you know, it worried me that there was no counterpunch at all over 80 minutes. There was nothing that, that really encouraged you to say, all right, shit, they've had, they're having an off day. But ultimately, you know, there's still enough there. We saw that 20 minutes or that 15 minutes or that half an hour or whatever of what we're capable of. We didn't show any of it. The, the, the South Africans actually put us into our shell that much that, it's encouraging for the rest of the world to go, we can shut this team down. Let's re-look at that game that South Africa played against us and see why. On the other side of the foot, though, Marty, obviously the All Blacks will be going, why did that happen to us? And why didn't we adjust? And why didn't we throw some punches? And hopefully they'll be better for it. And all of a sudden they find a way, when they do get under that type of pressure, that they can fight their way out of it, unlike they did at the weekend at Twickenham. Tactically, they're bringing seven forwards off the bench. I said yesterday, it's almost like yeah. an NFL team. <laughs> I mean, you know, they've got an offense mate. team that, can, mate, it's just incredible. And they've obviously decided, mate, that that if something happens, they lose a member of the back line. Well, they'll just stick a forward, maybe a flanker out there, and the ball will never get out there. That's it. They'll just keep it in the forwards and they'll keep it nine and ten. Does that mean that other teams have to readjust around us? Or is this more important that we go, no, 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 look, we don't play like that. That's how you guys play, and you're damn good at playing like that. We still have to. You know, pick five, three. We've still got to run you off your feet and get you gassed. Well, we, yeah, we, we, we can't adjust to what the opposition do as All Blacks. We, we've got to recognise what makes us better than them and, 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 and work out how we break them down, regardless of what they present to you. I couldn't believe at the, that this was a late change for them to go 7-1 split. And um, they brought Quaker Smith on. Uh <laughs> replaced Billy LaRue, but I sat there at the stadium and watched Billy LaRue warm up. So it wasn't 
that he was unwell or that he was injured uh, on the captain's run or injured on the morning of the game or woke up not feeling great. He was running around, as was Andre Pollard, um, involved in, in the warm-up at Twickenham and looking perfectly fine. So, you know, again, they're very capable of this South Africa and Rusty in particular of, of saying, all right, well, we've shown the All Blacks that we're going to do this and we're going to have this type of bench, but actually we're going to play a different style of game and we're not going to reveal that until, you know, at two hours before kickoff, which is exactly what they did, and went 7-1. And I was just like, oh my goodness gracious me, how are they going to, to do that? But they have versatility. Like, they're, they're, like Fuff de Klerk can play on the wing and he basically defends on the wing. So they, they have the ability to manipulate their squad in a way that, they they can bring on this physical presence and bring on a seven. You know they 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 replaced their whole forward pack mm. apart from Peter Steph the toy. Yeah, happened to toy. He was the only mm. starting player that was That's there. Crazy mate. About I don't know fifty fifth minute. Yeah, incredible. And what well, you know what it was hard, mate, was was picking man of the match because we got asked to pick man of the match. It was like well. That forward pack, Khaleesi played well. You know, the the front row played well. Marks played well. But they've all only played 45 minutes. So they've only had a certain effect on the game. So it made it really difficult. And then it was like, oh, we'll give it to Peter Steph the toy because he played the whole game. But then we thought, oh, bugger, he got a yellow card. So we, <laughs> that's not ideal for him. So, yeah, it was, an, it was an incredible mindset that they came up with that close to the game. But by hell, it worked. And they didn't. They didn't miss a beat when they when they made all those changes. It's fascinating talking to you about this. I've got a couple more questions for you, and we'll let you go. I always thank you so much for your time, mate. But it's just, I mean, I've been you know waiting the last couple of days, thinking, God, I've got to talk to you. I'm you know, really looking forward to this to hear what you have to think about that, <laughs> especially when you know you get a couple of days to to absorb it all, process it all, and think about it all. Mm. As you, as you can imagine, back here, I mean, straight away there's a knee jerk reaction amongst some who says, "Oh, it's all bloody Foster's fault." I mean, it wasn't Ian's fault when we were winning four games in a row. All of a sudden, it was okay, and all the praise goes to all the other assistant coaches. So you got to kind of expect that there is going to be a backlash after the All Blacks lose, and especially lose like that. And so the things I wanted to cover with you is just, you know, what kind of a dent is that to the ego? As an All Black, when you lose like that, Justin, when you get smacked like that, what do you, what do you, what do you feel, what do you think, what does it do to your resolve? Well, you know that there will be a media and a public reaction um, that, that that is typical of New Zealanders when you suffer a defeat like that, a world record loss. Um is another dent in your history, you know, so, you know, that that is not nice and it's not a nice thing to feel as an All Black. And equally, then you'll have the other component, which is dealing with the coaches and your own review. So not only have you got to deal with the public and media pressure back in New Zealand, but you've got to deal with the fact that you were so comprehensively outplayed. So you've got to make sure that you make the adjustments, you do the review, you be honest, but equally, you, you don't lose confidence in your teammates and your coaches in your belief that you're a good side. And that, that's the hard adjustment to make. It's the mental adjustment. So, look, I, I certainly don't feel that, that, that the All Blacks will all of a sudden start thinking that they are not a team capable capable of winning the Rugby World Cup. They will look at why they got made very, very quickly to look ordinary after looking so good for the best part of the year. But... Um, I feel confident enough that this side, with the experience that it's got in it and the players they've got, you know, the White Locks, the Retallics, you know, Cody Taylor's been around for a long time, Dane Coles is there, Bowden Barrett, you know, like even Richie Moonga has been around long enough, Rico Iwani, those guys are all experienced All Blacks that hopefully they take a hard look at themselves, but they also try and keep the morale of the team high because they've got a huge challenge coming up really soon and they're capable of winning that challenge so they don't need to get themselves you know uh, really really low and, and and questioning their ability final question then um just what you've seen over the weekend um and and, and I look we could go back two or three weeks but i mean like the closer it gets to the to the world cup kickoff i just look at the games that are that are right now england lose to fiji um, Japan just seemed, can't seem to find a prayer at the moment. Um, Scotland, you know, they're just rolling on. We don't know what they're going to be like against a major opponent yet. France were pretty impressive against a poor Australian side. Samoa just about upset Ireland. And the Springboks were magnificent, albeit against 14 men in the second half. How does any of this adjust, if at all, you, you looking at teams going and rearranging maybe a favouritism order for the World Cup? I think it all revolves around the pool. 
and and every team have been through their process now of, of their warm up games. Players have been given opportunities, some haven't. Um, there's been performances that have fluctuated, um, you know, and and that that has been intriguing more than anything else. Uh, you know, Fiji's performance. I actually went to the game and watched that uh, at the weekend. Just went along as a normal punter and. Why, hello, I enjoyed it sitting down and watching. <laughs> oh, mate, it was good. Yeah. There's nothing better going to twick it and seeing the, seeing the palms get beaten. <laughs> Stick your sing, swing, low, sweet chariot up my buller. Go uh, on. I know. The worst thing was I was invited into a box full of Englishmen. So uh, every time Fiji scored and I jumped out of my seat and nearly spilt my beer, I had to be, be very careful and mindful of the people that I was around who weren't as happy as what I was. But... You know, you know they're in an awesome pool. You know that's a pool that uh, everybody should be really excited about at the Rugby World Cup. You know Wales will be nervous about it, but you know so will Australia to a degree. But I, I think what once it comes to the tournament, you know these teams, regardless of what's just happened, and, and a long-winded way to ask answer your question, that, that they would have focused on exactly what they need in terms of their preparation and the outcome of the pool. That it's as simple as that. The, the warm-up games now are gone. Obviously, the All Blacks know what they have to do against France, and then they should get through the rest of their pool. Some of the other sides, like England, will know that if they don't beat Argentina in that first-up game, they might struggle to qualify. Equally, Wales don't beat Fiji. They might struggle to qualify. Ireland are in the, one of the toughest pools with South Africa and Scotland, and they've got Scotland on that first weekend. South Africa, massive game. They'll all know exactly what they need to do to make sure that they get to the point that they qualify. That's all you have to do, Marty. Like, don't have to qualify first. You just have to qualify. And then from knockout football, winning a World Cup final is possible. And that's, I think, what every team's focus will be, getting everything right so they get out of their pool.